I'm going to start this show now by introducing you to Ayla. Welcome to the show. Ayla. Hi, thanks, Melanie. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited. This is really cool what you're doing. So um, tell me, you call it the Palisade Garden and Homestead Club. Tell the folks what that means. Yes, it's a very super original, unique name because we're great at creativity. Um, but myself and two other girlfriends in Palisade found the need and felt the urge to help people kind of come back to those old fashioned um lifestyle mm -hmm. choices um it's like growing your own food raising livestock you know things like that so um it's been great so far we've been going for I think four months and we've we've learned a lot so what does your preparation look like for this like you say you've been going for four months how did how did you start the process uh we had a group chat and we said we should do this there's not much preparation, <laughs> but it's been really great and it's been really well received. And uh, we have people that come from multiple counties to Palisade for our monthly meeting. And yeah, we're just really excited. It's really taken off. It's something that people need and people want. And yeah, it's... So is this, is this going to be actual dirt getting turned or is this just teaching each other different things about agriculture and farming and old-fashioned ways of growing things. So funny how you just mentioned dirt getting turned. We recently finished our uh, community garden in Palisade, and one of the driving forces between for that project was so that it could be like an outdoor classroom. So we can teach people like how you companion garden, what goes great where, how the light affects the plants, how deep they need to grow. Uh, things like that and, and teach them the difference between like root crops things like that okay and the folks that are coming to learn these things what mm -hmm. kind of folks are you seeing interested in doing those kind of uh, learning processes that you're talking about we have a wide variety so we have a cattle rancher who um, comes that just wants to learn how to garden for her and her family we have some people come that want to grow uh, cut flowers and then we have people who are well-established in their garden and old-fashioned lifestyles and have high tunnels and huge greenhouses and are completely self-sufficient. So it's a little bit of everything. And even though I'm an organizer, I'm learning lots. So, <laughs> so because do you garden? Do you uh, something yes. Something that you've done all your life or something you've just dabbled in? No, it's something... So it's really funny. When we moved to our farm, I tried the first year, failed. I mowed everything over. And then last year I tried again and it was you know, really dry. I got a handful of cherry tomatoes. So I said, this year's my year. I'm going to make it work and I'm going to be in over my head with produce. So I'm really excited to hopefully not ha to have to shop. <laughs> be able to walk source. out into your garden and yes. get those fresh tomatoes that's yes. the best part isn't it mm -hmm. okay now are you incorporating like teaching about like animals and stuff also you mentioned the you know chicken and eggs and mm -hmm. beef and things like that is that to come or is that part of this already that's kind of to come um it's kind of hit or miss because we have so many people that are gifted in different areas it's hard to fit everything into a one-hour meeting uh, but at our market, which I'm going to plug it real quick, is May 5th from 6 to 9 p.m. in Palisade. We're going to have local producers in the Red Willow, Hitchcock, Chase, and Hayes areas there. And it'll be a great opportunity for people to learn more about like raising your own sheep, raising your own goats, chickens. We have a vendor coming who raises Nebraska-grown shrimp. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> excited <laughs> that is exciting <laughs> i didn't know i could get fresh shrimp in nebraska so <laughs> cool. i'll have to look into that yeah yeah so, so it's it's to come okay so now how are you getting those folks invited for that or is that going to be like a market type of thing where people can come and buy process products or is that just something that is like a teach and learn thing so our market on the fifth will be where people can come and purchase okay we are planning on doing like farm tours. So hopefully we can take everyone that comes to our group club and go to like the shrimp farm and see how that operation works. Go visit, you know, a rancher who produces only their own meat. 
So yeah, that's, it'll be neat. There's lots of learning opportunities, but yeah, there's lots in the work. What made you want to do this to teach people to plant and to be self-sustainable in this kind of way? Oh man, this is going to make me sound like a crunchy person. (laughs) Oh no, no. But, um, there's, I have some friends who are completely self-sufficient. They grow their own food. They grow, they produce their own meat and they are incredibly healthy. They buy hardly anything from the store. And I'm like, that's what I want to do. Uh, because there are a lot of things that are products that do have adverse health effects and we don't realize it until later down the road. So that was kind of my, my reasoning. My husband and I were also blessed to be able to purchase my late grandparents' farm. And I feel very irresponsible if I don't use it to the best of my ability. So I have plenty of room. I might as well (laughs) get all the things. So that leads me to my next question. Where Mm -hmm. exactly is this community farm going to be located? You said Palisade, but is it in town or is it on Grandma's farm? The community garden is in Palisade. So it's in Centennial Park. We're kind of limited on space right now. We're hoping that as people see what we're doing and how it's benefiting the co- the community, that we'll be able to either add a second raised bed or get more land eventually to have like a larger community garden plot. How many people do you have come to your club right now? Uh, there's anywhere between 15 to 45 I think is how many we had at our first meeting wow it is being well received yes it's very yeah there's a lot of people that pack into the palisade library every month when do you meet we meet the first Thursday of the month at 6 p.m well you're gonna probably have more people now I hope so (laughs) everybody wants to get their hands dirty they want Mm -hmm. to get in there and hold the soil and put the plants in the ground I mean not everybody but yeah a lot of people do yeah even if it's not even if producing your own food or growing your own food's not like in a person's wheelhouse there is something nice that comes from buying locally produced like meat and vegetables you know that the animals were taken care of loved on you know the garden was well tended to. So yeah, there's just something nice about connecting where our food comes to comes from and to the people that grow it. Right. Cause not everybody can be a farmer mm-hmm. and have an agriculture space, but you can, anybody can take a little plot of dirt or even pots and yep. put their little tomato plants in there and feel what it feels like to connect to what it means to grow your own food. Absolutely. And there's a little bit of pride that comes with being able to grow a tomato plant those suckers are hard (laughs) (laughs) it's too warm they won't produce fruit if it's yeah and you know I learned at an early age not to pick weeds around the tomato plants in the morning when there was a dew on the plants or they would rust you know all those little things that you don't did not know that so So. at least that's what I was told that you know the plants you can hurt the plants if you touch them when they're wet the tomato plants so I have to have that fact checked but that's what I was told I'm just gonna add it to my notebook there you go (laughs) do not do this <laughs> <laughs> don't do that so but this is exciting what you're doing um what do you want to see you kind of talked about this a little bit but what do you want to see like a year from now from this a year from now I see our little palisade garden and homestead club like expanding into other little communities and just helping more people kind of destigmatize the stereotypes of homegrown food so explain that a little bit oh my gosh like um raw milk okay air quotations it's not good for you it's the most delicious thing ever but we've been as a people and as a country we've been taught from an early age that you only get store-bought you will get sick if you drink raw milk which is not true raw milk has all the you know the great benefits into it same with, um, we buy all our meat from a local producer and we can tell that that cow that's, I don't know what we buy. My husband does that. Um, <laughs> that cut of beef was very well taken care of and you can just taste in the difference. Yeah. Taste the difference between what we buy at Walmart versus what you buy from the neighbor down the road. Right. And I think like you're talking about the milk and stuff like that, I think it become where it was being sold in such a mass mm-hmm 
quantity that they have to do the pasteurization yep. all that kind of stuff to make sure it's safe as you know it's in the on the grocery shelves for two weeks or whatever yeah. you know yeah you know things like that but yeah the ones of us that grew up with the home mm-hmm. you know cream and the stuff and we really have been spoiled and that's great that you want to bring that back and teach yeah. people how to do that safely you know yeah and just there's a lot of people that don't understand that fresh food does last long does last for a long time like unwashed versus wash eggs I could go all day oh I know I I have chickens (laughs) yes chickens so yeah if you don't wash the eggs you don't wash that protective coating off and they can last you don't have to refrigerate them Mm -mm. yeah no for sure so this is great what you're trying to uh what I wouldn't say trying isn't even the right word that you are doing for people in your community um what kind of work have you done in that garden so far like have you planted anything yet we have not planted anything yet our last uh frost date is i believe may 5th or may 7th so um as we're here recording right now our first load of dirt is being delivered to the community garden so that is really exciting so in two weeks hopefully we should have our first plant in the ground there cool do you um are you teaching people in your garden club about that process? Like what kind of dirt you're using and the fertilizer and things like that? I'm picking on you now. That is Jessie's wheelhouse. <laughs> Who is Jessie? She is one of the other um, organizers. She is who I go. She is like my little garden guru. I go to her with questions. I just send her a picture and she's like, oh, they need this, 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 and this. And then I do that and it's like, wow, that broccoli plant is going to survive because you're a garden genius but jesse is fantastic on that and then we have um what is jesse's last name jesse vogel okay Okay. they own his and hers homestead in palisade so they're one of our friends that are very self-sufficient they have got it down to down to a science so you're definitely leaning on people that have Mm -hmm. like you you said in their wheelhouse things that they are very familiar with that Mm -hmm. they can teach other people and so you're going to be gleaning from this as well oh yeah awesome even though I get to help organize everything I'm I'm definitely learning so and you are a group of three Mm -hmm. organizers you want to talk about the other two yes so Jesse is one of the organizers and then Tessa Stinson she and her husband own um, Stinson Lean and Cattle so she's a rancher she is you have a project and he's done she is your girl So she is very capable, and I admire her for that. And then I am the last organizer, and I'm kind of just like, yeah, I'll do whatever. It's This is great. I can make bread. So there you are. are. (laughs) Here you are. I will teach you all how to make rolls, but yeah. Well, everybody has their thing, right? Mm -hmm, Absolutely. Now, have you ever considered doing the... um the like the grain mills and things like that to grind your own wheat or flour yes I have have you I've looked into all of it um my husband kind of tells me to just hold on (laughs) there's a lot to do when you have there is a lot yeah young (laughs) yeah so no I've looked into what it would be like to um like mix my own chicken feed goat feed uh things like that and then um yeah, how I could, yeah, mill my own wheat, but I, I don't, I'm not there yet. Soon, I hope, soon, but So if anybody's listening to this and they're like an experience, I don't know, making their own flour mm-hmm. or doing their own chicken feed, like you're talking about, things like that, would you like them to be a part of what you're doing? Would Absolutely, okay. yes. How are they going to get a hold of you? We have a Facebook page. It's called the Palisade Garden and Homestead Club. Or you can reach out to Jesse Vogel, Tessa Stinson, or Ayla Smith on Facebook. Okay. All right. And just tell them who you are and how you want to be involved. Exactly. Even if you don't know a lot or have like a specific skill set, we still want you there. Even if it's just to learn how to plant a tomato, then yeah, everyone's welcome. Maybe you're the person that knows what how a garlic works. Yes, I have no clue how to grow garlic. Like garlic bulb. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you have to leave the whole bulb or do you just take part of the bulb? You know, that's, yeah. Yeah. Those kind of questions. Yes. Or how much chicken poop on your soil is too much chicken poop? Mm-hmm. Or how much horse manure should you use? You know, there's exactly. so many things that you yes. think, oh, the pH level, if it's too acidic mm-hmm. or if it's not acidic enough. Yeah. Yeah. A lot going on. But 
people shouldn't get scared, right? They should no. know that you can just put a seed in the ground and sometimes it just grows like magic, doesn't it? Correct. Um, sometimes you put a seed in the ground and it just grows. I, funny story, I was very overconfident this year with my garden after two failed attempts and I thought I could grow celery. I can't. I bought 8,000 seeds. Not a single one has sprouted. But the best part of this is becoming familiar with failure and understanding that it's okay. I love that story. So, I've never grown <laughs> celery. <laughs> I'm not good at it. <laughs> Everything else is great. Celery, no. I will still have to buy that from the store. But <laughs> Now, do you have little plants started? Oh, yeah. My husband, I had them all over our house on every table we owned. And Easter weekend, he was here in North Platte. And he calls me and he goes, I got you a gift. And I'm like, ooh, I hope it's a rototiller. And he's like, (laughs) no, but close. And so I was like, well, I'll just go to Walmart. I need to get a shelf for my plants and garden tools. He comes home and he's pulling out the same shelf that I bought, that he bought in North Platte. And he's like, I got you a shelf for your plants. So yes, I have a whole room that's just dedicated to my garden plants. That's wonderful. Yeah. Do you, I'm going to, I'm going to tease something a little bit mm-hmm. here. And so, so we're Melanie, Mrs. J and guests, and we haven't exactly explained the Mrs. J yet. Mm-hmm. And we're still working on that. But part of that, a little bit of a secret to that is wanting to make sure now we love men. I'm going to make mm-hmm. sure that everybody knows that we love men. We love our husbands. We love farmers, the, the masculine side of it, but we also want to make sure that we're paying attention to women who want to grow and, and women knowing that they can do this and, and knowing that they can help in the farm or even at home in their own small garden. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a whole story that's coming along with Mrs. J that we're saving for a special edition, but just kind of leaning towards that story a little bit. Um, as a woman, why do you think it's so important to know how to do what you're trying to learn how to do? Okay, so I think it's important because your husband's not always going to be there. If an accident happens and you're left alone, sorry, you need to be able to take care of yourself. Absolutely. And I have this really bad habit of telling myself, oh, I can do that. It's not too hard. So I I get into these projects that I can't finish on my own. Like I thought I could tear down our barn with just my Jeep. Couldn't do it. So (laughs) sometimes we do need our men. But yeah, it's it's. As women, we need to understand that it is great to have men. It's a blessing to help us, but we are very capable also. So we need to not let society, sorry, people tell us that we're not. Yeah, and just having that, those skill sets is Mm -hmm. great. And you can teach your children and, you know, and and some of us have boys, you know, and we're teaching our our boys to be men. And so it's great to to know kind of what's going on on the farm or Mm -hmm. in your own garden, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's great that you and a couple women are putting this together for Mm -hmm. other people. Yeah. Yeah. And we have quite a few men that attend also. So it's... Well, we need their knowledge. Yeah, we do. That's what we're asking for. Yeah. Teach us. So it's it's nice because I know that if I ever dove into cattle, which I probably won't, I would... I would ask our neighbor who has cattle, right. you know, because I don't know what I'm doing. Well, it just so. makes it makes sense to get yeah. that knowledge from people that have that knowledge mm-hmm. and that experience. Yes. For sure. And that's kind of what you're doing for the community of Palisade. Mm-hmm. And you want to see that grow to other communities as well. Now, I know that there are communities that have, you know, community gardens and stuff, but they're kind of inclusive. Mm-hmm. You seem like, you know, they kind of just have a group of people that take care of it and they don't really invite a lot of people in. Or maybe you don't know how to get involved. But mm-hmm. you're being very open and saying, come, right? Yes. Yes. We, um, Tessa and I mainly did the building of the garden beds. But now we're getting to the point where, like, well, and if anyone wanted to, you know, hammer and nails with us, they were more than welcome to. <laughs> but um, now we're getting to the part that it's like all hands on deck. You want to learn how to plant stuff, come on down. If you want to help... Um, work on the little children's area where we're turning stumps into checkerboards and, you know, things like that come on over. So that's exciting. I want to come down to Palisade and do a story as well. Yes, absolutely. Kind of, 
Yeah, maybe you can send me some pictures mm-hmm. of things getting started and then I'll come down when it's starting to grow and things. Yes, I'm excited. I'm excited to see people use it. Yeah. So. And, and enjoy the bountiful harvest that comes from your hard work, right? Yes, I hope it's bountiful. <laughs> I don't have a good track record, but... <laughs> you have help, it sounds I like. have help. That's so, right. yes, it will it will be great. That's exciting. So we're basically out of time. Mm-hmm. Um, I, let's just recap one more time. You have the Palisade um, Garden and Homestead Club. Yes. To get down to old-fashioned... Way of living. Way of living. Mm-hmm. Knowing how to grow your own tomato. Yeah. <laughs> Just a singular tomato. That's, that's all we want out of this. At least one tomato. Now, I have been taking care of uh, sunflowers for years. Mm-hmm. So I start, and then I got a pink sunflower, and then I take all the seeds from the pinkest ones, and then I just plant those. And the only the, and I've been doing that for about 10 years, so I have a really beautiful pink sunflower I can grow. So maybe I'll give you some of my pink sunflowers. I was going to say, you know what? Our next meeting is May 2nd. <laughs> May Come 2nd. down. At the library. At the library, yes. Fade. What time? 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Okay, guys, you heard that. If you're anywhere within... Driving distance to Palisade, I highly recommend um, going and checking it out what uh, Ayla Smith and her um, her comrades are doing down there. Yeah, it's going to be fun. a great time. All right, and don't forget the market on May 5th. Yes, May 5th, 6 to 9 p.m. Uh, we've got local producers and some big city shopping experiences coming, so I'm really excited about that. You don't want to miss it. So no, you don't. Thank you so much, Ayla, for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me, Melanie. Absolutely. This was great. Good luck with your green thumb. (laughs) All right, folks. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. This is Melanie, Mrs. J, and guests.